Hundreds of years ago, if you lived in a small, quaint French village like Tanneron, you'd probably be referred to as a peasant. In much the same way, if you were to review the finest in luxury motoring from Mercedes-Benz, dressed like this, they would say, yes, you are a peasant. Luckily, the times have changed, and so too has the S-Class buyer, where before the car appealed to the elderly jacket and tie brigade, the new S-Class buyer realizes that his status and success isn't defined by a jacket and tie, but it's all about being seen in the right places. It's all about image. In actual fact, he probably wouldn't be uncomfortable losing a top. have long been unashamed fans of the new S-Class's styling, irrespective of the body style, and this latest convertible is no different. While it loses some of the elegance of the coupe's dramatically sloping roof, the open cabin lends the car a sense of glamour. To say that this Mercedes looks at home in the hilly south of France, though, might be stretching the truth a bit. It's a little too conspicuous to blend in with its surroundings, and its massive girth makes for slow progress on single-lane roads. However, it does provide an excellent vantage point from which to enjoy the scenery. Mercedes-Benz are bringing two variants of their S-Class Cabriolet to the market. We're getting the S500, we're getting the AMG S63 as well. Why anyone would crave for hardcore performance in such an opulent vehicle is beyond us, but evidently Mercedes-Benz knows its customers. Powered by the trusty bi-turbo 5.5-litre V8, the S63 also comes standard with magic body control and the trademark curve tilting function. But here on launch in France, we've chosen not to drive the AMG version because the test vehicle here is 4Matic and we're not getting that in South Africa. Neither are we getting the S65, so we've chosen for the S500 and I think understanding the S-Class buyer, this would be the car to go for. Uh, S-Class has always been about luxury and refinement, not about brawn and tire ripping up tar moments. And we've really been impressed with the overall package that uh, the engineers have presented with this car. The minute you strip a roof off of anything, things become a bit of a challenge. Your torsional rigidity goes, you get the scuttle shake. So Merck have really thought long and hard in terms of how to solve that problem. The fact that we've got a soft top certainly helps in terms of weight reduction. But what they've also done is they've used a, a lot more aluminium. Now the closest sibling, I guess we could call it, would be the S-Class Coupe. The way it's different from the S-Class Coupe with the Cabriolet is that they've actually put a, a new all aluminium rear floor in. The luggage bulkhead has also got aluminium and magnesium. So this reduces the weight of the car, but very importantly, increases the torsional rigidity and that for me is, is critical. Obviously driving on a car that's got as standard their airmatic air suspension, it really does allow me to set it into comfort mode or sport mode. But I suppose most important is that the dampers are continually adjusting to your driving style. And as you can see, the roads that we've been on, we've been on beautiful highways and then really twisty mountain passes. I've obviously put it into sport mode when driving on the twisty bits. But in comfort mode, the car is really so well insulated, not only from a cabin perspective, but just how it absorbs the bumps and how beautifully it glides along. So that class luxury that we've come to know in S-Class 4 is certainly not lost in the Cabriolet. The same could be said of the interior, to a degree at least. It wants for nothing in terms of comfort and equipment, but the parchment leather is neither practical nor very tasteful, and that wood-rimmed steering wheel, oh, very circa 1996. Massaging seats can be found on C-segment hatches nowadays, but the chairs in the Mercedes are notable for their extensive range of adjustment and superlative support. Of course, you can also customize the way your S-Class drives by toggling through the various steering, suspension and drivetrain settings, but we recommend you leave your stately carriage in the default comfort mode. While the Mercedes-Benz owner's profile may have changed in recent years, the S-Class clearly still caters to those drivers who are accustomed to having things done on their behalf. Apparently, only peasants reach for the seatbelt themselves. Mercedes-Benz have introduced some technologies which are optional extras and you're going to see them introduced across all of the cabriolets that Merck produce. Firstly, there's a thing called an air cap, which essentially with the push of the button, I can deploy two wind diffusers. The one pops up 
on the top of the windscreen and the other one pops up in the rear of the car just behind the passengers and that controls the wind turbulence in the car when I'm driving with the roof down. You've also got what they call air scarf, so here in the back of the seats you get beautiful warm air blowing in your neck and all that does is it just allows you to enjoy the topless driving experience a lot longer and in through all the seasons in the year. Very, very cool. And finally they're premiering the Thermatronic climate control system in this car and essentially all it does, whether the top is up or down without you even realizing it, it does all the regulation of the climate in your car without you pushing any buttons. Seamless. And of course you don't lose any of that quiet insulated cabin that the S-Class is renowned for when you put the roof up because they've gone with a triple layered soft top. Um, it's also got a glass rear window so visibility is good through there as well. In terms of performance and power, again more than enough. Your 4.6 litre V8 has got 335 kilowatts, 700 newton meters. You aren't going to need more than that. And obviously there's a nice change in the engine note as well the minute you slip it across into that sport bucket. Well, will you look at that? The peasant has come down from the mountain and found himself at the place that you would really want to come to if you want to stand out from the crowd and be noticed. Where else but uh, Monaco? And as you can notice, preparations are frantically underway for the Formula One race coming up in a few weeks time. What will probably be another Mercedes-Benz dominated race. But to be able to cruise along the streets of Monaco very, very slowly, of course, is still a, a rare treat. Um, but I guess, I suppose, if you were to ask Lewis and Nico, what would they want to glide smoothly around the streets of Monaco? And if they wanted to stand out from the crowd, they'd most definitely tell you the S-Class Cabriolet, top down of course.